Welcome to the second episode of Road to Learning a British Accent. In this episode, I'll share with you how I started my first attempt at learning the British accent. Hello, I'm Wayne. Last time I've talked about why I like the British accent. So after I decided to learn the British accent, I instantly started trying the most common and recommended learning methods, which are shadowing and echoing. Just in case you don't know, shadowing is a language learning technique where you repeat an audio with your mouth just after you hear it. Echoing is something similar. The slight difference is that echoing requires you to echo the audio inside your head before repeating it with your mouth. It is claimed that both shadowing and echoing help you develop and improve the pronunciation, speaking rhythm, stress placements and pitch movements of the language you're learning. They seem like the perfect methods for learning the British accent, yet it's not completely true. Even after days, weeks and even months of training, I still couldn't imitate simple British phrases as simple as Oh bollocks. Oh bollocks. I forgot how I pronounced it, but I'm sure it's nothing like the one I'm currently performing. Back then, I didn't know what was going wrong. Shadowing and echoing seemed like the perfect methods for learning. It wasn't until years later that I finally knew why they weren't so useful. It's because both of these methods rely too much on your hearing and your brain's original repertoire of sounds. According to these studies, by the time you're 12 months old, you lose most of your ability to learn new sounds naturally. And it gets worse as you keep aging. Meaning if you only rely on listening, you can only use your brain's original repertoire of sounds to find sounds unless you have phenomenal hearing abilities or unless you are very young. So normally, unless you got enough exposure to the right sounds when you were young, like most native speakers do, your brain will naturally find a sound it thinks is most suitable in the repertoire instead. That is, use an incorrect sound instead. But it was years later before I knew the reason. So in short, at that time, I couldn't find any effective way to learn at all. And I could only get some superficial training after practicing for such a very long time. Without any significant process, I gave up learning the British accent because I thought it was impossible. In other words, my first attempt at learning the British accent ended up in a failure and ended up giving up. Next week, I'll share how I attempted to learn the British accent once again. If you're interested in learning the British accent or even other accents, remember to subscribe and stay tuned to this series. This video ends here. See ya.